Joining me today, I have two music therapists with the Children's Hospital here in Winnipeg, Cecilia Bellingham and Lacey Friesen. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, good morning. Thank you. I would love to know music therapy for children. Both of you, please do respond. What got you into this career? Um, I guess I'll go first. <laughs> um, I grew up in a very musical family. My mom is a music teacher. My dad plays drums and sings, and we all did like, piano, band, all that stuff. But I've always had this heart for um, joining music and then helping others. So I stumbled across the career path of music therapy, and I just I knew instantly that was what I wanted to do. Um, and then further into my training, I was fortunate to do my internship here at the Children's Hospital. And that honestly, that was that was it for me. That was the road. This is what I want to be doing. Nice. So. How about you, Cecilia? Well, I played violin growing up, so also musical um, household. And when, you know, considering what I'm going to do after graduating, I either could pursue music or I was also interested in becoming a doctor. So I decided to try out the music route first and got accepted at the U of M here. And my first year of um, in the School of Music, I stumbled upon about four or five books on music therapy. And once I like flipped through them, I'm like, this marries both of my interests to be able to use music and my passion to use it within a, in a hospital setting. So then I uh, did go out west because at the time there was no program here in Manitoba. And so I went to BC to get my degree and I was fortunate to do finish my training um, here, which is a 1000 hour internship. I got accepted to do it here at Children's Hospital. And that's how I got my foot in the door to demonstrate what uh, music therapy could offer within uh, these walls here. And so uh, I got my dream job right from the beginning. So I was very lucky. That's amazing. I would love to hear, obviously, it's going to look very different. But what can a typical day with music therapy at a children's hospital look like? Yeah, oh, what can a day look like? Um, uh, Cecilia and I, we provide both um, some groups in the hospital here, for example, in the playroom, or even we slide over to a couple other areas to offer some music therapy groups. And some of our goals that we're kind of working towards is social opportunities where working on creating positive interactions for patients in a time when they don't really have a lot of opportunities for that. So that can look, that's one part of what we do. And then another really key part is that we bring music up to the rooms, especially for patients that are isolated or really unwell and not able to even get out of bed. So we use music for that positive stimulation, the emotional well-being part. And then often we also use it for like in, um, promoting relaxation for the stressful times of the hospital. It can be when they're worried about just the general nature of being here or um, specific procedures coming up. We, yeah, we really use music to help promote that relaxation piece as well. And we're lucky sometimes we get feedback when families are there when we meet their child and, and do some music perhaps for the first time. Uh, sometimes they say thank you. That's the first time that their child has smiled since they've been in the hospital. So um, it, it's it's nice, you know, again, it's, it's a privilege that if there's parents present or if a child's old enough that say yes, we can come in so that we could try to do our, our thing and we try to maximize every visit because we might only get to connect with them once um, because things can be so busy in the hospital um, or the up and down trajectory of them, how they're feeling. But um, yeah, this way uh, we try to build as much as we can and to make it the best, you know, session for them that day. Amazing. So, Cecilia, do you play violin for the patients? And then also, Lacey, what instrument do you play or do you sing? Or like, yeah, what does that look like? So I don't use the violin very much. I have brought it in a bit. Um, uh, there's 
In the last couple of years, there have actually been some teenagers that have played fiddle. And so we provide groups at the Child and Adolescent Mental Health Units. And when I find that out, um, I then, uh, we luckily have had two violins donated recently. I bring my own in and then we can do a little bit there. Um, same within children. So, you know, but I don't use it uh, uh, on a regular basis. So, um, and then we also use guitar, um, ukulele and a variety of rhythm instruments and as well, the voice. Nice. Lacey? Does that yeah, pretty um, much cover it? <laughs> pretty much covers it, yeah. Every once in a while, we'll pull a keyboard in there. But <laughs> again, some donations we've had. So every once in a while, we pull in a keyboard, but mainly voice and guitar. Fantastic. Cecilia, you already kind of touched on this, but if you don't mind, I would love to hear a story or two of how you've seen music therapy affect children in the hospital. Well, it's wonderful. Music is such... Um, a really amazing uh, tool to be able to encourage or to have children, you know, naturally respond to it. Um, so whether there's children who naturally, you know, move to music, and in fact, we're often finding whatever we're singing or playing in the individual one-on-one -on -one session or in a group, we're moving to, and all of a sudden there'll be kids moving along with us. There's ones that will vocalize, you know, make all these sounds, and it's just so beautiful to hear them be free to do that. And some love gravitate to the instruments, you know, they're wanting to strum our guitar strings, they're wanting to touch the guitar. Um, so we're lucky that we can First, as music therapists, we're trained to observe those kinds of things, how the child responds first. Then we try to incorporate that within our session. So either to encourage it, them to continue to do more. So especially if there's movements and things like that, or if they're well enough to sit up, that's good for breathing. Um, same with moving. If they're using an instrument, moving it up and down, that usually, yeah, um, uh, they have to breathe in deeper and so that's uh, as well that's good for their lungs and to keep it clear um but then we we try to also see what else they'll know or what else they'll respond to and and if they're here long term unfortunately there still are children who can spend months to a year to a couple of years here so what Lacey and i do we kind of we we uh, go back and forth between those initial goals of if they need for relaxation or for a bit of pain management and distraction. Mm -hmm. And when they're well enough to incorporate the developmental goals, exposing them to animals and the alphabet and colors and body parts, all those things that they would be exposed to outside of these walls here. Um, so uh, that's really important to try to normalize the experience for children here and to obviously try to decrease any regression in their development. So if anything, maintain it. And if we can also increase it, then that's wonderful too. Lacey, any, anything you want to add? Yeah, I mean, she's already touched on that. We're like, as music therapists, we're trained to be so aware of the environment. So, I mean, lots of times I find music looks like it's just a really fun play session and it is, <laughs> but it has so many more underlying goals. Like, I just think of when we walk into an environment, we are aware of like, what is the, the mood going on today? Like we can come in with an entire plan. We've been seeing a patient for a couple of weeks or months and then that day they're really not well so the entire plan out the window what are we doing today and then this day it could be promoting relaxation and um just it's amazing some days we have these sessions where it's like oh wow like what we do has such it has such an amazing impact on mm -hmm. on kids and and families and it's humbling and it's so um inspiring and exciting to be in this field so just even seeing like a patient when we enter the room they might be a little bit worked up or have had some um, like a dressing change or some other procedures happening and when we can come in right following that and their heart rate will decrease like 
within the first song to a, a state of more relaxation and comfort. So yeah, it's, mm -hmm. yeah, we just heard, we love what we do. Yeah. <laughs> and children yep. are so resilient. Mm -hmm. yeah. And mm -hmm. so that's what is also very inspiring to see that. And um, yeah, so they'll respond. They won't tire of repetition. We do, but they don't. <laughs> and it provides comfort, you know, in yeah. fact. Um, and again, if that's what music is the tool that we and the gift that we get to share. Yeah. And that's what's beautiful. If it can provide comfort to these children in those moments, sometimes families can't be here. They've got other children at home. They've got jobs that they have to return to. They're from remote areas. So that's we, I mean, I can only put, you know, imagine if I was in that situation, what would I do and just feeling pulled in both ways. But then that's why we're very lucky that the, the Children's Hospital Foundation supports our program and to fund uh, two music therapists so that we can go up and do what we're trained to do and do what we love to do and feel so passionately about. Fantastic. Lacey, I love that reminder, yes, you get to actually see evidence of your music therapy. You're like, the heart rate went down. I can see it. That's amazing, it's truly. So cool. And I mean, <laughs> I remember coming in as a student and being like, what the heck do all these machines mean? I have to learn what all these numbers mean. Look at the beeping. What what can I touch? There are tubes, there are cords. Like, um, Obviously, we, we grow a comfortability <laughs> with uh, how to uh, maneuver and and read the machines that we need to be reading. But the first thing we do when we walk in is really assess that environment. And and so it's just, yeah, it's really cool to see that tangible evidence of like, OK, I'm looking in and this number is here and I want it to be, you know, here or <laughs> mm -hmm. so. Yeah. And just totally. working alongside like other health professionals, like talking to that nurse and saying, OK, how is the day going? How is this patient today? Or working alongside um, like child life specialists or physiotherapy and o OT, like getting to work and say, hey, you're working on this goal. Can I support that goal as well during the music session? So music therapy sessions. So. Fantastic. And well, both you ladies. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, it's even nice when we have had nurses that they want to come in and do some procedure and they're like, oh, but the child's enjoying some music right now. So, you know what? I'll come back later. So that's really nice when you that they see the benefit for the patient and put the patient's needs first. Absolutely. I think it's wonderful. Both you ladies, Lacey and Cecilia, thank you for joining me today and sharing a little bit more about how you bring this joy to the Children's Hospital. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. much.